Welcome to the first developer blog breakdown of Anvil Empires. Hosted on Tuesday, March 28th on the Steam page, we're going to be diving into what the developers themselves have talked about when it comes to the game. It first starts off with the question, what is Anvil Empires? Anvil Empires is a large-scale game of conquest played by thousands in a persistent online world. And like I mentioned in my last video, it's going to be a medieval version of Foxhole, but it's going to emulate that experience to a much bigger degree. Players will take the role of an individual citizen and build towns, form empires, and ultimately wage war in the ages that last weeks at a time. Or how I like to picture it is playing an individual character in Age of Empires, which sounds awesome by the way. Wars are won not only through strength of arms, but by having a strong economy and supply chain to feed and arm the armies of players. The conflict is fully driven by player actions and takes place in an organic world with no safe zones or artificial barriers to PvP. While Anvil Empires will share many elements with Foxhole, including a persistent world, sandbox gameplay, mass collaboration, and a cog in the wheel player perspective, it will also be very different in other areas. There will be a bigger emphasis on settlement building and the conflict will support a lot more players. Something I want to mention is I've been looking more into Foxhole's history and the current state of affairs talked about by various content creators and one thing I noticed that I believe may have changed with the Inferno update maybe before or maybe after is that if you're a solo player you might not have as many opportunities or be able to experience the game as much as people that are in a group. The game itself tries to encourage you to cooperate with other players so you might notice that the experience may feel a little bit lacking if you're just someone who doesn't really like to join clans and just wants to go off on your own. So the next section dives into the world of Anvil Empires. The world map goes by the name of Caligo. It's a land that once birthed and enlightened people who represented the pinnacle of civilization. Now it finds itself as the canvas for bloodshed and conquest. Three desperate alliances vie for control of Caligo's land and resources, the Pagans, the Ancients, and the Remnant. Just by a brief look at the factions, I would say that the Remnant is more akin to the Roman Empire, the Ancients more similar to the Celtic or Germanic tribes, and the Pagans definitely seem to be like Vikings. As far as the technology goes, Anvil Empires is targeted to support a thousand players within a dense battle and many more thousands across a large persistent online world. They say that many massively played PvP games either support a small number of combatants on the same dense battlefield or a large number of players spread out across a large map. In Anvil Empires, the goal is to support the best of both with up to a thousand players marching shoulder to shoulder in a dense environment. To meet these lofty goals, the R2 engine has been developed from the ground up over the last few years. The R2 engine is a custom server engine that supports up to a thousand players in a dense environment and tens of thousands of simulated and replicated entities in a large world. Several years ago, a real world test was staged with a thousand players in the Battle of Red River tech demo, I'll play the footage on screen, and the current iteration of the engine supports many gameplay features, including the ability to simulate massive dense forests like in this picture, existing in a local region with a very large number of players in it. Unlike many general purpose engines, the R2 engine was designed from the ground up to be optimized specifically for games like Anvil Empires. This isn't a miracle technology that just works, but takes a practical approach to meet Anvil Empires novel design requirements. The technology will contend with real world restraints like bandwidth and the limit of modern day server CPU performance, but will overcome them by taking advantage of parallel processing, modern day network replication techniques, and application specific optimization. The last section goes over the pre-alpha of Anvil Empires. Anvil Empires will be an incredibly complex game that will require a lot of experimentation and iteration to get right. Like Foxhole, there is no existing blueprint for game design, so ideas must be validated and developed through playtesting in a live environment with at least hundreds of simultaneous players from the community. To meet this goal, the pre-alpha will launch this month which will be used as the platform for further developing Anvil Empires in the coming months. The initial pre-alpha will be an early in development demo where only a small subset of foundational features will be in place. Many features will be added, removed, or drastically changed throughout the process, but it'll all be in service of finding the optimal design that meets the goals of the project. Now there was a couple of things I wanted to include from the FAQ on their Discord. The first one is that although they're not sure how long the pre-alpha phase will last, the current estimate is for at least half a year but there's a good chance that it could take longer. Once the technology and gameplay are stable enough, the game will proceed to an early access release on Steam. They say that to put things into perspective, the first pre-alpha for Foxhole didn't even have any logistics or vehicles, and the world was comprised of just a small area of what is seen as a single region today. I think what they're trying to build here is extremely unique. I do hope they're able to learn from past mistakes because as I was researching more about Foxhole, I did notice at certain times that people talked about certain changes that drew people away from the game and just in general how certain things could be exploited like alts for example and how much they can mess up in a single day let alone an hour. 
It seems like for this one, we also have people that kind of want to live outside of the interconnected grand collective faction mentality and kind of take their group of players or clan and live on their own, do their own thing as like a neutral party or just something that's separate from the faction and not really dictated or controlled by them. I think it could be worth giving players that opportunity, even if it's to a certain degree, because although Foxhole does present a scenario where it's pretty clear cut green versus blue, in Anvil Empires, it seems like you could also have external branches outside of that and it would still make sense. Different subsections of Vikings, for example. Of course, we know about the Western Roman Empire versus the East Roman Empire, stuff like that. But overall, that's everything I wanted to talk about today. Let me know what you guys thought about the first developer blog. Also, I have actually found a clan to join up with. It's going to be a primarily life skill or logistics based clan called Caligo Trading Consortium. Highly recommend checking them out if you're more interested in that kind of gameplay. I'll leave a link for the Discord in the description below. Have a great night or day, folks, and farewell.